I drank myself through a business that I owned in North Carolina, very successful business. Drank myself through management jobs after that. Drank myself right into a homeless shelter with a 12-step program. For me, it was uh, hopelessness, despair, uh, no meaning and no purpose. It was like quicksand and I woke up one day and I couldn't get out. I distinctly remember coming home and I, you know, got picked up from school early. They were like, you know, don't get on the bus to go home. I'm like, you know, why not? And it was like, well, there's no home to go to. You know, my mom had a lot of substance abuse issues, so a lot of responsibility was left on me. And where most kids could, you know, focus on after school and all of those types of things, I didn't know where we were going to be when I went home. It made it hard to relate to people, hard to connect to people, because I was very angry at that time. Confused, not you know, knowing how we things had got so bad that we wound up, you know, in a homeless shelter. When I, when I think back of the anger and sometimes the way my attitude was, it, it really wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't intentional either, you know, it was just overwhelming. And in spite of me and my attitude, people still worked with me. They still showed me that love and gave, gave me hope. Well, when you hear about a shelter program, that's what stands out about it, the shelter part. I'm getting you out of the cold, I'm giving you a place to live. But with Caritas, it's so much more than that. They have so many people who invest their time and their skills and just parts of them that they have to offer that really shapes you as a person. So it's not just about you're giving me somewhere to live, you're giving me life skills, you're teaching me something along the way, you're showing me compassion, you're giving someone some unconditional love and some hope. Caritas is a lot of the times giving you something that no one has ever offered you in your life. Yeah, you can give me a place to stay for a week, but then what's after that? So with Caritas, it's more of, you know, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna provide shelter for you, but I'm also gonna give you some skills so that you can have stability and provide shelter for yourself here on out. Well, Caritas has been really an organization that's found gaps in the system that clients fall into and has grown in ways to fill those gaps through an emergency shelter, through an addiction recovery program, uh, through an employment program, and through a furniture bank. You know, I think what Caritas has been good at is we look people in the face, people that some people look past, and we recognize their value and we help them on their journey back to stability. Well, I, I think the important things here to remember that it's a very, very important cause, number one. Number two, this is an extremely well-run organization and is doing a very, very good job of, of addressing the issues and solving them in innovative ways. I mean, I just don't think there's another organization uh, in, in Richmond that I know of that is able to take a dollar and create an effect out of that dollar that's way beyond the actual value of the dollar itself because of the, uh, the hard work that so many volunteers add to that dollar. So I think the first thing that Caritas proves to all of us, reminds all of us of, is, is that there's no human potential that you should just throw away and waste. And in fact, I think over and over again, uh, Caritas uh, clients have shown that if they have the support of the community, they'll reach that potential and they'll come back and contribute. Nine months ago, I was just really, really in a bad place. I, I had legal issues. I, I could not stop drinking or using drugs. All sorts of reasons that I thought my life was over. And the great thing about being in the healing place, it's a safe place to be and it allows you to accumulate some sobriety time and that makes you much more receptive to, to being able to change certain things about yourself. I mean, there's a camaraderie amongst us that um, I've never really experienced. A lot of us come from, you know, broken homes. And so some of us have never really had an example of what a healthy family looks like. For me, recovery uh, is, is not just abstaining from using, it's about changing who I am on the inside. And this, this place, the healing place, it, it gives you the tools to really do that, to, to transform who you are from the inside out.
You know, we got a lot of men that, when they came through the program, uh, struggle reading and writing. And then you couple that with computer, the computer age. What it does is teaches them how to navigate through the computers. It teaches them how to sit down and do a proper interview, how to budget, how to conduct themselves out in society. And that's very important. It works, it, it teaches them that and it gives them hope and it gives them meaning. You know, after you finish a year-long program, you know, if we were just gonna pretty much be put out and, and go find our own jobs and, and find our own place to live and all this stuff, I mean, our backs would be up against the wall. They uh, help you find employment. Um, they'll put you in the transitional apartments. You have to save a certain amount of money before you can move on. They make sure that you're pretty stable before you're able to move on. And, and I think without it, not too many people would be staying sober. Resumes have changed a lot in the last 10 years, and I've been kind of absent the last 10 years. The resume I had today was formatted the same as it was back 15 years ago. They changed all that. They made it more of what's in line for today. And I got up here, and all of a sudden, you've got all this material thrown at you, and there's a lot. I mean, it's a full day every day for five weeks, which was awesome. And it just hit home, and I got motivated over it. Fantastic career opportunity kind of became available and I had them working with me going through that. The position I hold now is awesome, and I manage people again. I would not have had the confidence to apply for that job. I hadn't been in works at that point where that job came up. I mean, I was 50 years old when I got sober. I got chance at a position that would allow me to retire by the time I was 65, comfortably. That, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen to me. You know, there's nothing like the smile you see on somebody's face um, when they have an apartment and they have a couch to sit on and a table to eat at with their kids and their family. I I've uh, had a lot of troubles in my life and I, I can relate a lot to these people. Um, you know, I have some empathy for them. I've been in this situation where I, I haven't had much. Well, there's not really one specific type of person that comes through to receive furniture. A lot of people are down on their luck. Other people have other circumstances. It, it's just people who are in need. A lot of times they're coming out of a, a shelter. And they've got their first apartment and, and they're sleeping on the floor. You know, to give them a kitchen table to eat at and, you know, a, a couch to sit on, um, it really restores some of that dignity, gives them something, you know, that they're, they're making. A, a step forward in their life you know and it's just it's just about trying to make that day a little bit easier for that person and, and show them that you know there are people out there willing to help them and they've got you know some things to look forward to and we get furniture from anybody that's willing to give it to us through congregations we pass, ask them to pack a pod it has this whole green component too we kept you know more than a half a million pounds out of the landfill last year you know, so there's this whole environmental piece to what we do, too. We really recycle, repurpose, reuse everything. And if we can't find a use for it, somebody around here can.